Hey, in this lesson I'm going to talk about some of the axioms of probability. So, first something that's not an axiom is this limit here. This is the limit that was in the frequentist view, that as you repeat an experiment again and again and again, as the number of experiments goes to infinity, the proportion of outcomes in a certain event over a number of experiments goes converges to probability of the event. Now, the frequentist view might take this as an axiom, but the Bayesian view is a lot simpler, and so it's not, we're not going to treat this as an axiom. However, it's a great explanation tool, so I'm just going to use it just to give some intuition. So, first axiom is that probabilities are non-negative. Now, let's think of why this makes sense. Why it makes sense is because as you're counting the number of outcomes that, fall in, that are in a certain event, that's not going to be negative, that's going to be zero or positive. As you count the number of experiments that you do, that's also not going to be negative. So this fraction here, that shouldn't be negative. Here's another one, axiom. The probability of the sample space is one. I mean, keep in mind, a set can be a subset of itself, so the sample space can be an event. Now that's actually pretty easy. When is the, think about it, when is an outcome going to be in the sample space? It's always going to be in the sample space. So this fraction here is going to be 1, which is why the probability of, event of an outcome being in the sample space is 1. Now here's one that's a bit less intuitive. This here is the union of some events. In particular, these events are mutually exclusive. So that means there's no outcome in the sample space that would be in more than one of these events. So, why is this? Well, let's think. Let's say your events are E, F, and G, and they're mutually exclusive. Now, let's say you're going to count up these fractions separately. You've got an N, E, and N, F, and N, G. Now, each time you see an outcome that's in any one of these, it's only going to be in one of these three. So, and because of that, what that means is that the probability of E or F or G equals the probability of E plus probability of F plus probability of G. 